I've flown in British Airways Club Europe on 10 flights in about the last 14 months, so I'm going to look back on those flights with you now and compare them to the economy experience that's a few rows back. I'll tell you how much more the business seat will cost you and what you're going to get for the extra cash, and I'll give you my honest views on the flights that I took, the service I received, then I'm going to tell you whether I think it's worth it and whether you should be paying the extra. Hi, I'm Phil and I'm on a grey gap year. So let's dive straight in and talk about arriving at the airport. If you need to check a bag, the first benefit your business ticket will get you is priority check-in and so you should get a reduced wait time. The lines I saw varied, but the business line was usually empty in the UK and the wait time was, you know, different in uh, return trips. And it looks like we've got one check-in desk, whereas they've got four. Not used to standing in lines for one world flights. What a pampered little prince I've become. There was always a long, slow economy bag check, however, except in Edinburgh, where there were no lines for anyone. But the passengers had to carry their own bag onto the conveyor belt there, which I loved. So the, you walk up to the check-in desk, you weigh the bag, and then, <laughs> and then you carry it around the back of the check-in desk and put it on the conveyor belt yourself. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of quaint, isn't it? You know, provincial airport-esque. <laughs> your business ticket is also going to get you fast track security at london airports and at many others not that i knew that so i missed out uh, on two of my returns in the summer last year from catania in sicily and bucharest in romania there wasn't any fast track for anyone i haven't got any footage of security since i was almost wrestled to the ground transiting heathrow last year but on to happier things, once you've cleared security you can relax in the business lounge and this is a premium benefit and something that will save you money. And as I've said before, free food and drink is nice but it's the quiet and the calm of the business lounge that is the premium benefit for me. The business lounge in Gatwick was probably my favourite. It was spacious, light and open, had some different areas and they're all separated up nicely. And even the main uh, open area of the lounge, although it was getting quite full, it didn't really feel loud or busy. There was even a brilliant kids area that had heavy glass panelling, so kids could run around and make their noise without disturbing the other passengers. It was absolutely brilliant. And if you compare this space to the noisy, echoey, loud space outside the lounge, there's just no comparison. The Edinburgh Lounge was also nice, but smaller with less food options. I think it was soup and sandwiches when I was there. Uh, and when I was delayed, it did get really busy. It got a bit noisy, uh, but I tend to sit at the desks away from the main area. So this all worked well for me. Because I was delayed, I didn't get the chance to experience the business lounges at London Heathrow. And on the last two occasions I've flown out of there, I've used the first lounge that I get with my status. I've been told that the first lounge is actually very similar to the business lounges upstairs. And next time I fly out of Heathrow Terminal 5, I'll make sure I go and explore some of the other lounges and then I'll report back. And the lounges in the airports that I flew home from weren't as good, but these were much smaller airports. The lounge in Catania didn't have any agreement with British Airways, but I managed to get in with my priority pass and it has room for about 20 or 30 people. In Bucharest there was a lounge, but this was also small and it was on a mezzanine floor, so it wasn't quiet and calm. It had the noise of the main airport ever present. Uh, Marrakesh also had a small lounge which wasn't particularly quiet or comfortable, uh, but it was no worse than sitting in the main areas. And in Istanbul at Sabiha Kokchen Airport, I had my very own Matt's Planet lounge moment. So I know that with my One World status, I get access to the One World lounge here at Istanbul, which is the Plaza Premium Lounge. And so I've just come to the Plaza Premium Lounge and I've just been told that I don't want the Plaza Premium Lounge, I want the Plaza Premium Lounge. And it amused me all the more because of Matt's video a few weeks previously. So if you're not a priority pass holder, then go past the first premium, the first Plaza Premium Lounge and continue to the second one. Don't look like an idiot like me. I actually went in both lounges using status and my priority pass and found them to be almost identical. Both were limited in food options and drinks. 
Uh, one actually had a bar where you could pay for coffee and the other one had an outdoor smoking terrace. I thought that might be a nice place to look at the planes. I was wrong. When it's time to board, you're boarding Group 1, I think. Uh, they tended to board these flights as Group 1 to 3 together, and I can't remember what it said on my boarding pass. Uh, but there has often been a bit of a scrum. Now, I don't rush away from the lounge to get to the gate, so I don't always see the start of boarding. Group 1 is now supposed to be boarding. I, I, don't, think, I don't think this is going to work. It's a scrum. Well, that was fun. I tried to barge my way through, and it's a massive scrum of people all trying to board. <laughs> when I'm in economy, I board last. <laughs> I'm never in a rush to get on the plane. It's kind of cool to be first on when you're in business, you paid the extra and stuff, but... But when I'm in business, by the window, I do like to get on and get situated if I can. I guess it's sort of an age thing, like getting the curtains drawn. Priority boarding is something that might be useful if you're at the back of the plane and you have a large carry-on, but up front, it's much less important. On European shore tour, the business class cabin is separated from the main cabin by a curtain. And this isn't any ordinary curtain, no, this is a movable curtain. Uh, as additional tickets in Club Europe are sold, so backwards moves that curtain. And this tells you all you need to know about the cabin and the seat, and that's that there's very little difference between the business and economy seats. Maybe you've got a centimetre or two of additional pitch, but essentially your club seat on this flight may well be an economy seat on the next flight. So the only noticeable difference in the seat is that the middle seat is kept empty. Uh, sometimes there's a tray there, but if there isn't, the tray is often just in the back, uh, in the seat back of that middle seat. Uh, and if you, it's not there and you want it, you can just sort of pull it down yourself. It's also worth noting that there isn't any in-flight entertainment on British Airways European flights, uh, so there's no IFE screen, and that's for club and for economy. I haven't been offered a pre-departure beverage on European Club, and I think it would be difficult to do this on short-haul aircraft that BA use, because everyone boards from the front of the plane, so the crew can't get up and down the aisle. But a bottle of water at the seat, maybe a bag of nuts, would that kill you? Even on the longer flights of three hours or more, the service you receive will be in relation to the number of rows of Club passengers. And there were 12 rows of Club on each of my recent Istanbul flights. That's a lot if you haven't seen that many. So if you want to take full advantage, don't be shy to double up with the drink service, get two bottles of wine or whiskey or whatever your tipple happens to be. Oh, I just need a cup of tea, man. Ten rows of business. I think I'll be lucky if I get a cup of tea on a 90 minute flight. Uh, you'll also usually have a choice of meal, although they do sometimes run out of an option, uh, like if you sat back in row 10 or something like that. See now that, that looks excellent, doesn't it? So a beef salad, it's a one hour flight and you kind of have to eat quick, but it is really good. Coming into Rando, I was deleting my scone. I didn't think this was probably good for a 90 odd flight. This is what I found to be the absolute icing on the Club World cake. The extra cherry on your ice cream sundae, the cabin crew. Some people do post dreadful stories about BA cabin crew, and I'm sure there are some customers that have had poor experiences. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Nonstop Dan, called them mediocre at best. And I have to admit, I started going off him a bit after I heard him say that. And, and I can only report what I've experienced. And I've experienced brilliant service in all the Club Europe and other British Airways flights that I've been on. Uh, the crew on the very early morning flight to Marrakesh were a little bit slow out the blocks, but uh, about 60 minutes after wheels up their caffeine hits obviously worked their way into the systems and they were just as brilliant as every other crew that's looked after me on every flight i've been on the cabin crew have worked their socks off to look after the passengers the, the crew are great aren't they I, I don't know how you can mess it up some actually it's easy to mess up isn't it so many crews are just surly and grumpy but i've never had that with ba so this is my 14th ba flight 
uh, in about a year and um, you know, crew's been spot on in every single one. They were excellent on the way out and they've been excellent again. See that, they're just so good. They're constantly making sure you're okay, constantly making sure you've got plenty to drink, eat and so on. It's, the cabin staff have been absolutely fantastic. BA cabin crew, first class. 12 rows of business, they absolutely worked their socks off. So I just want to say thank you to all the BA cabin crew who've put up with this slightly awkward and geeky YouTuber when I've been in your cabin. Thank you for looking after me so brilliantly. A hat tip to you, or if you're a cycling fan, chapeau. But how does this club experience compare to the economy experience? I've booked three economy flights this year and I've been upgraded on two of them. Thank you BA for that incidentally. But fortunately, unfortunately, I was able to remain in economy for one of them. And this was from London Heathrow to Istanbul's brand new airport. Wow, that is a large airport. I got my steps in that day. On this flight, I got the BA snack, which is a tiny slice of banana cake and a small bottle of water. But I decided that I fancied an afternoon tea, so I ordered the cream tea. I got a scone, cream, jam, and a nice cup of tea. Uh, and the surprise edition was a chocolate brownie. I like the club service. I like the way they look after you. You definitely feel special when you're in club. Get a nice meal that you can't get in economy. Uh, but, you know, I've got the middle seat free because of being gold. So it's the exact same seat product. I've got a nice cup of tea, which admittedly cost me about nine pounds for the uh, tea and scone. But that's still a massive discount, it's not <laughs> the club price. I was fortunate to have the middle seat empty on this economy flight, so the seat and cabin felt no different to being in club. I was just a few rows back and I was on the other side of the curtain. And although there wasn't a meal service or a regular drink service, my afternoon tea was under £10 and it just broke the flight up nicely. Well, to work out whether it's worth it, we need to work out how much extra it costs. Now, flights to Rome in April will cost you about £140 more than in economy, uh, and that comes with a checked bag called Economy Plus, and that's a fairly hefty increase in any terms, and in percentage terms, it's a jump of about 85%. Now going a little bit further to Athens on the same dates in April will cost you £175 extra for club over the economy fare and that's an increase of 70%. So it's a decent increase but now is it worth it? Well I took these club flights because I was aiming for status and so I was looking for tier points and in these terms it was definitely worth it. And I loved feeling like a pampered VIP, uh, walking past the crush of economy passengers when it was time to board, swanning through fast track security straight into the lounge and then also being first off the plane. This doesn't always make too much difference at border control at the other end uh, but it does feel nice and it's all part of that VIP experience. And if your main two weeks away costs you an additional additional £150 each way, then you may well consider this money well spent. And lots of people agree with me because there's been at least 20 club passengers on each flight. And those two flights to and from Istanbul this year had 12 rows or 48 passengers uh, in club on each flight. So I think if you can afford it, why not treat yourself? It's a nice way to start a special holiday and it's a more relaxed way uh, to end your holiday on the way home. But for balance, let me put the counter argument here too. If you're paying for Club Europe because you want a fancy seat, don't. There's no financial case. You'll get food and drink included in the lounge and on the flight, but that's going to have a cost of, what, 30, 40 pounds at most? Nowhere near your 150 pounds increase in fare. What you will get is an upgraded experience, but if you have status, then you get a lot of this anyway. I get to use the business class check-in, use fast track security, and use the business lounges because those club flights I took got me gold status. I even had the middle seat left empty on that economy flight, which is probably due to my status too. So my seat experience was identical to club even when I was in uh, economy. But even so, if I can afford it, I still think it's worth it for that VIP treatment and that sort of experience that you'll get. And that's what BA have to keep tapping into to keep those rows of club full and the curtain pushed all the way back to row 12. Let me know what you think of club because I know that a 30 year old me watching this video would have thought the 50 year old me is a complete moron for spending that extra money and would just see it as a complete and utter waste. I would love to hear from you. Please do give me a thumbs up if you've gotten something out of this video and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. It all helps build the community and grow the channel and your help in this is much appreciated. So thank you for watching and joining me on My Grey Gap Year.